Hi everyone, it's Denise here. Um, this video I've been wanting to do for a long time and it's taken me a bit of time to get prepped for it because I had to make all these samples of different um, papers and all that. So what we're doing is we're testing all of sort of the most, oops, the most common inks that people can find out and about um, on a variety of planner pages. So what we'll do is first is because these samples took me so long to do and I didn't want to bore you with it. So what I did is I just got a stamp that I thought covered most stamp um, types. So something solid, something with a bit of fine detail, something sort of thinner and all that sort of stuff. And plus, yeah, it's cute to look at. Now, these stamps is from a stamping up set called Swirly Bird and they are usually quite clear but this is a brand new so they're nice and clear and they're really really firm now these are a very high quality stamp um, if you give them a squeeze they're really firm so I th thought I would uh, go through some of the stamp types as well. So the stamps I've used are stamping up ones and I chose these colours or these images because they represent a wide variety of stamps out there. So something thin like a text, a solid picture, a, a picture with a fine detail as well. Um, and you know, using these different inks it has stained them but the colour doesn't transfer and that's fine. When I started using these stamps they were like this so crystal clear and with stamping up because they're a high quality stamp they're really firm if you give them a push other brands that um, you may have in your stash are planners anonymous and they have let me just get one of these ones out oh that's i need a solid one i need a solid one Probably one of these little ones. It's still really firm, so it's made of a good quality photopolymer like these stamping up ones. So they're a really good brand to use as well. Another common one is Lawn Fawn. Once again, these are really solid if you push them between your fingers. So a really good high quality material. And these are the Kayser Craft ones. These are unfortunately not as good a quality. Um, you know, they're quite thinner. And when you squish them between your fingers, it's really hard to see here. But they're actually quite soft. And so what that can mean is when you're pushing down on your block, as you can see there, like it moves... Whereas if I got one of these ones, there's hardly any movement in that at all. And that can, when you're making cards and things like that, that can really distort your picture. So you need to learn the amount of pressure. So these ones you can't because it squishes everywhere. But for like a Planners Anonymous or a Stamping Up or lawn fawn or any other um, mass produced items these are solid as a rock and you can push right down into your surface um, to get a good image now what I like to do to have a good surface and I didn't bring it across because there was just so much going on anyway is I have a just a regular craft mat and underneath it I have some non-slip matting just from the, the shoe, just from the supermarket like you put in your shelves in the pantry and stuff like that and that gives me enough of a cushion to get a really good image also um, I stamp onto a glass desk so it has that little bit of give as well another thing you can use underneath a craft mat or something is a mouse pad actually so it's got that just that little bit of give 
that lets you get a really good impression. So you, know, you can have that underneath and it just, you can see by pushing on the paper, it moves down and that just really gives you a really good connection. So that's just a few sort of hints on the actual stamping process. I'll go through physically stamping out all these colors in a tick, but first of all, we'll go through some of the popular paper types in planners. Now the best thing when, this is just a non-reflective surface, it means nothing else really. When in your planners, the best thing to do is actually get a page out. And so if you've got a happy planner, take it out of the, the discs. If you've got a ring planner, take it out. And as much as possible, um, removing that page. If you've got a ring binder, the best thing, this is just a sticker book as an example, um, it's just best to flip it out like that so you've got something firm and then you've got an even playing field as well to do that. So it's just as getting the surface as flat as possible. So while we're talking about that, I'm talking about you know, TN inserts. So this is just a little pocket one I found just standard thickness paper I don't think it's anything special I can't really remember um, but it's just all about making it as flat as possible so even if you have to get a wad of paper or you know, like a notepad to make it flat so you don't have that ridge um, so putting it underneath to sort of bring it up is really good as well because then you're not fighting with this page being higher um, when they've got less pages in it on this side. So you want to create an even stamping surface as much as possible. So this is just a standard TN insert. As I said, it's just a standard GSM of paper. It feels like around the regular paper um, for you know copy paper of 80 GSM. So what I've done is I've gone through and all these different inks and we'll go through one by one. So the first one is Rager like Archival Ink. So this one is acid free, permanent and waterproof. So this is really good if you want to do any watercoloring and all that and the like. It is a very heavy ink and it's permanent so you need to make sure um, where you're stamping it. It gives a really good impression. Um, when I stamped this, the stamp was new, but it, you can see in other versions down the track of other papers, you get a better one. As far as bleeding goes through, we'll go through each of these inks first and then I'll turn the page. So I've got Ranger Archival, which is a good all rounder. Then we've got the Memento Tuxedo Black. Now this one is really good if you're going to do any, um, alcohol marker covering coloring like Copics or anything like that once again it leaves a re it's a really nice dark black so that's really good and then the, the third one I included this one because this is an oldie but a goodie it's the hero art shadow ink and it's a bit of um, it's a dye ink but it's a bit of a hybrid ink it's like this is from 2012 um, and it still works beautifully. Um, I just included it just for a bit, bit of a specialty ink because it's not widely used but these colours are stunning and you get a really good impression. On this paper though it bleeds. So let's have a look at the bleed through. So as I said the Hero Art Shutter ink bleeds straight through. The Memento dye ink bleeds through as well because it is a dye ink it soaks into the paper. So any dye ink is more often than not going to go through the paper, whereas a pigment ink or a hybrid ink or some other, pigment and dye are the two main ones. You know, the pigment inks, chalk inks are gonna sit on top of the paper. Dye inks will dye the paper, so it will, it's made to go through. So the shadow ink comes through. Memento dye ink does shadow. This is, remember, this is on 80 GSM. The, archival from Ranger it does shadow a bit but it doesn't really seep through um, 
and you can get all these inks in a variety of colors so the darker the color the more shadowing you know, like pens that's going to happen so you know there's very few inks that are not going to be able to be seen um, and it's just a range uh, just you testing them on your own now alcohol inks don't even bother using them in your planner they'll just seep straight through I'll just get my Copic marker here so we'll do that and I'll get a lighter color um, let's go light pink and with that straight through even onto that next page and even the first so yeah Copics alcohol inks just don't put them in your planner unless you're going to cover something up on the back so that's our first three inks the next one we'll go through is the, so I'll just stack these up. So the next one is Stamping Up. So this is an old pad from Stamping Up. It's a dye ink, it's a water-based dye ink. Um, it's got a foam pad as well, which is different to some other ones, but we'll go through that as well later. So a dye ink, chances are it's gonna go through now this is the Kaiser Craft ink this one's in chestnut this is a dye ink as well so it's going to dye the paper this has got a felt pad really good price point this one actually behaved better than I gave it credit for but it's still a dye ink so it can go through and then this was another dye ink it's a collider color um, palette that has all the graduated ones and you can ugh, I knew I'd get ink on me somewhere um as well so i just grabbed that because you know some people pick those up in d stashes quite cheap so once again these are all dye inks so let's see how they bleed through so the stamping up one bleed through nothing surprises it the kaiser one it's a little bit of shadowing but i wouldn't say it's bled through as such so that's a good one and also the collider color one bled straight through as well the next one is, a, this one's another older one like the Hero Arts Shadow Ink. It's a My Favourite Things hybrid ink, pa ink pad. So it's a cross between a pigment and a dye. Um, it's got the felt one. This is like super juicy and always has been. I've had this one, gosh, it doesn't have a date on it, but yeah, really old. This can be quite saturating as well. And then I thought... Um, a lot of crafters in the planning community, and I know Ash from Plan, uh, excuse me, from Plum Mashable, you know, loves the oxides like I do, and she's just starting to get into the Distress Ink ones. Now, I was into Distress Ink first and then went to the oxides. Um, distress Ink ones are notoriously woeful for um, getting a crisp, a crisp, clean image, as you can see from here. And then the distress oxides gives you a bit more one, a bit more of one. So we'll go through and we'll re-stamp these. Um, I think I must have been rushing because it usually gives a better um, effect than that. So you can see, like these are the same colour, but you can see the difference. So the distress is a dye, and so the distress ink is a dye whereas the distress oxide it's that combination it's got pigment and the dye so it works both ways so I like those so let's have a look at the bleed through so the hybrid ink here bit of shadowing distress ink it's bleeding through the page on this one and the distress oxide it's bleeding through a little bit um, for I would stamp with either of the distress ones on a higher GSM paper it just works better all right the next one is a chalk ink so a chalk ink is like a pigment ink I think it's um, so it's like a pigment ink so it will sit on top of the page um, this is a super juicy um, little G drop as you can see really crisp image there then another one is Versicolor so you can usually get these two at Spotlight so the Versicolor um, not so good on this paper as well but it's a pigment 
a water-based pigment pad as well. And I just picked up this one from Kaiser Craft in the poppy colour and it's a pigment ink. So once again, you know, it should sit on top of the paper. So let's have a look how they performed. So the chalk, bit of shadowing sitting on top of the page, the Versicolor one, and this is in a lighter colour as well. So your lighter colours will not shadow as much. It's just a natural thing. And the Kaiser Craft pigment, bit of shadowing as well, but it hasn't quite seeped through. And then the last one is a new one to me, but has been on the market for a long time, is the Versafine. This is the pigment ink for fine detail. So this is a really good one for those super fine images. So planner stamps and oops, all that sort of stuff. And it is a pigment one, so it should sit on the on top of the page. So let's have a look. So this is a beautiful crisp image, but it does seep through shadow on this. I, it's kind of half striking through. It's more than a shadow, but that's, you know, just, I think the lighter colors would be okay. It's just the darker colors. So that's sort of how they perform on, in a TN on regular paper. All right. The next one we go through is just regular copy paper that I printed. These are old inserts from 2016 I printed on. So we've got the Versafine. So these will be in reverse order. So this is the Versafine I just showed you, the Kaiser Craft ink, the Versacolor cube, the pigment ink, and the Versamark chalk. Now, all of these have significant um, shadowing on this paper. ADG seems not the thickest paper. It's very thin. So how these are reacting to the paper doesn't surprise me at all. This is the Distress Oxide Distress inks, the My Favourite Things Hybrid ink, and the Dye ink. So the dye ink straight through, bit of a strike through there. Distress oxide striking through and the, sorry, the distress ink striking through. The distress oxide was more than I thought, but you know, still, this is only thin paper. I wouldn't be stamping on that. The next one is the Kaiser Craft dye ink, stamping up dye ink, Hero Arts dye ink or the shadow ink. And the memento dies. So look at that. Complete strike through on two of them. Heavy shadowing on the stamping up dye ink. And the Kaiser Craft dye ink is actually the best performer out of those four. So you know the Kaiser Craft ones are surprising me. And then this is the Ranger Archival. Once again, the paper didn't really pick it up. This is ADG Sam is actually quite textured compared to some of the smoother ones and you know a bit of shadowing and that's it so moving on to the super thin paper of the Hobonichi planners so we'll go through these so we've got the Versafine the Kaiser Craft Versafine pigment Kaiser pigment versus color pigment and the chalk no surprises there but every single one has struck through this paper is like you know, I think it's like half a GSM or something. It is super, super thin. So you know, I'm not holding out that any of these will be a good ink to stamp in it just because of the thinness of the paper. It's got no oomph or texture to it to soak up the ink appropriately. It just sops it up and just goes straight through. So no surprises in those, but they are pigments, which are generally the better one to do in your planner. So the next one is Distress Oxide, Distress Ink, Hybrid Ink and Dye Ink. Now you can see this Distress Oxide has got that chalky look. That's one thing I like about it as well. So it has seeped through a bit. No surprises the others have as well just because of the thinness of the paper. So yeah, not real good there. So the Kaiser Craft dye, Stamping Up dye, Hero Arts dye, and Memento dye inks. Just look at that strike through. The best one on this was the Kaiser Craft dye ink, so that's not too bad. But yeah. Glad I didn't stamp in my Hobonichi. Um, this one's Ranger Archival ink. And this one's actually got, I'd call it more shadowing than strike through. Um, but yeah average impression 
I'm not a fan of the Hobonichi paper. <sighs> Alright, this one is on Filofax paper. I dug down into the depths of my stash to find this one because some people do like to use the Filofax original paper. So we've got the Versifying Pigment, Kaiser Pigment, Versicolor Pigment and the Versamark Chalk. Just move those out of the way. Um, these ones, I'd go Shadow, 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 Strike Through. This is a heavy shadow, light strike through, I guess. Um, so, yep, so these pigment ones, if you don't hear, using a lighter color, less strike through. This one is Distress Oxide, Distress Ink, Hybrid Ink, and Dye Ink. Once again, the dye ink's gone straight through, so is the hybrid, so is the Distress Ink, and the regular Distress Ink, but the Distress Oxide has as well which is surprising, but this is a thinner paper. Now, none of these papers are actually designed to stamp on. You can actually get all proper stamping um, mediums and all that sort of stuff. The next one is the Kazercraft dye, stamping up dye, hero arts dye, and memento dye inks. Strike through city. Just, yeah, no good at all on Filofax. And the Ranger archival. Bit of shadowing, I'd say. Um, no strike through, so that was interesting. The next one is 120 GSM. So this is the paper that I print any inserts for luscious labels on. I know Jess from Chasing Planet Peace uses 100 GSM or 110. I just could not put my hand on any of that. So I went for the 120 GSM. Now this is a real, like the higher the GSM, the smoother the surface. Um, and it actually makes for better stamping, as you can see by these impressions compared to the other ones. So we've got the Versa Fine Pigment, the Kaiser Pigment, Versa Color Pigment, Versa, Mark, Versa Magic Chalk, Distress Oxide, Distress Ink Hybrid, and Dye Ink. So the Versifying pigment actually went through this one as did the dyes. This one is the chalk and the pigment. So there's very little shadowing on that. Even the Kazercraft pigment, I think the shadowing's only because it's red. So your reds and your blacks will have a hint of shadowing. The distress is a little bit of shadowing as well. So yeah, but these two, so the Versa Color and Versa Magic, so they're sitting on top of this coated paper, are the best ones by far for any inserts that Luscious Labels puts out because they're on 120 GSM. All right, the next one is the Kazercraft Die Stamping Up Die, Hero Arts Die, Memento Die, and Ranger Archival. So no Hero Arts Die went through. These two, a little bit of shadowing with a lighter ink, It'd be okay. So they're not too bad. Um, and now we've got Kiki K papers. Now I've actually found some of the old super thin paper and the newer paper, so we'll go through both. So this is the old paper. So the Versafine pigment, Kaiser pigment, Versicolor pigment, Versa chalk. Distress Oxide, Distress Ink, Hybrid and Dye Ink. No surprises that there was strike through, bleed through from for most of those, apart from the Versicolor Pigment, tiny bit of shadowing there. So yeah, but you know, once again, super thin paper. And this one, the Kazercraft Die, Stamping Up Die, Hero Art Die, Memento Die, and Ranger Archival. Ranger Archival's not too bad. The rest are shadowing and striking through. So this is the new thicker paper. I'm not actually sure what GSM it is. But, you know, once again, Versifying, Kazecraft Pigment, Versicolor Pigment, Versa Ma Magic Chalk, Distress Oxide, Distress Ink, Hybrid, and Dye Ink. All of those bar the Dye Ink and Versifying Pigment, I would happily use on this paper. It's a little bit of shadowing, 
the Kaiser Craft pigment, in, even in red, there is literally not even a shadow. As well from the Versamark chalk and the Versam color pigment. Distress oxide, there's a little bit, but the Distress ink is more. So, yeah, Kaiser Craft inks are winning on that page in the new Kiki K paper. This one. So they're the sorry, that's the the small one. This is the Kaiser Craft die, stepping up, die hero arts, die ink, memento, die ink, ranger archival. Once again, the Kaiser Craft is you know looking pretty good. Bit of shadowing from the stamping up die ink. Ranger archival on this thicker paper. Hardly a sh like I can't even tell it's there. These two I would step away from because they're a die ink and they're just soaking through the paper all right we're nearly done only a couple more to go so this is a um, note paper from kmart so once again all of them laid out all of them i wouldn't use because it's just super thin paper the best one is this one which is the versicolor pigment so that's yeah I'm not going to go through the names because it's pretty useless paper. Ranger Archival is the best one. A little bit of shadowing. But yeah, wouldn't be stamping on Kmart paper. Um, we've got Happy Planner paper as well. This is just the skinny notes, I think it is. So we've got the Versifying Pigment, Kaiser Pigment, Versicolor, Versi Ma Magic Chalk and Distress Oxide. The only one that's gone through there is the Versafine pigment. The rest, hardly, hardly a mark. The Distress Oxide down the bottom came through a bit, but the Kaiser Craft pigment, Versa pigment, and Versa, Ma Versa Color pigment, and Versa Magic chalk are all fabulous on the Happy Planner paper, so that's really good. Next one is Distress Ink, Hybrid Ink, Dye Ink, Kaiser Dye, Stamping Up Dye. Hybrid's no good. What's that top one? Distress ink's no good. The hybrid ink, it's not too bad. It's got a light shadow. But the two, Kaiser Craft Dye and Stamping Up Dye, are actually really not, not too bad. There's a light shadow. You can just see here. The Stamping Up Dye. But Kaiser Craft Dye, you continue to impress me. Next one is the Hero Arts Dye, Memento Dye and Ranger Archival. So these two got strike through Ranger Archival at the bottom here. Wouldn't even know it was there. Wow, this is really surprising. And then I pulled out this paper because I thought um, I had a few, but I ended up with one sheet. This is some old Mulberry Pop Planner um, paper. And I had a look, they're unfortunately closed at the moment, but it's really good paper. So we just did the Versafine pigment, Kaiser pigment, Versicolor pigment, Versa Ma magic chalk, distress oxide, distress ink, hybrid dye ink, Kaiser dye, and stamping up dye. And these, the Versicolor one, I think because it's lighter, but even that thick one from there is actually pretty good. So out of all of those, I think our winner is... Um, these two guys here, which is really surprising. I've always said pigment, ink, pigment, ink, pigment. And, you know, um, the dye inks, this one's a pigment, but this the dye inks from Kaiser Craft, if you've got good high quality paper, are actually pretty good to have. So that's all the samples. So what I would go through is I thought I would go through some techniques. So I'll bring in my mouse mat and actually turn it over and this is just 80 GSM paper that I've pulled out of the printer just got some baby wipes because that's how I just clean my stamps you can use a chamois or whatever so so we'll pull out different types and we'll go from there. 
won't do that one. Do those two. And, all right. So we'll turn this around. Put that off to the side. So just one sheet at a time. So to do, to stamp on a die stamp, it's got a, a felt pad onto it. And so what you can do is just on an acrylic block, you just, you know, a couple of pushes in like that, load it up. And then it's just stamping is just best if it's straight down hold it for a second hold your paper and then lift up okay we don't need to smush this into the paper or try and push it through the desk so we'll give that a bit of a clean so we'll do dye inks so this is the Distress Oxide one. Once again, foam pad. So we just in a few times and then straight down and up. So yeah, you can see this is not good for just general stamping. Distress Oxide, we might as well Keep on the theme. So you just, well, some, you know, I like to sometimes do that, give it a bit of a smush. And then once again, straight, uh, we'll do the pigment or the chalk. Now this one is really juicy and being a smaller stamp, just bouncing it up and down just gently and then you get a good coating. But we don't need to push as hard, so just gentle pressure. So that's that one. Um, do the stamping up one because these are notoriously known for being super juicy and it's a foam pad as well so if you go and push in like that you're going to get all this ink around here you don't need that because that is just going to get on whatever project you're working on so we'll just wipe that off And just give it a little bit of a tap so just a really light tap is all that's needed for some and then push down a little bit of pressure and it comes up so put that one away i love these pads but they don't make them like that anymore we'll do the kaiser craft die So once again, just bouncing on. This is a um, foam pad as well, so it's easy to get everywhere. So a bit of pressure. Nice clear image on that one. But, you know, all these clean up pretty well. So uh, yeah, the stamps are clean, but they look worse. Um, we'll go the Versify. So once again, you can do that or you know, give it a bit of a tap. 
this one has got amazing coverage today. Don't know what happened the other day. So, and yeah, look at that. Having that little bit of squish in your underneath makes a big difference. So that's love that ink. And we'll do the archival. Once again, a bit of a smush, wiggle, and lift straight up. I think that pad might be getting dry. And then the last one is just the Memento Tuxedo Black. Um, I'm going to need a piece of paper. Didn't work out real good. Let me try that again. Let me just try it without the mat. It's a bit better. Hmm. Sure, what's going on with that one? I think there's just a bit of fluff on the stamp. Of the paper as well. Wow, not sure what's happening there. Might be time for a top up. Anyway, that's usually my best ink. It could be the paper. Um, but anyway, look, these these things happen. This is why we test stuff. This is why we try stuff out. Um, always, whenever you're doing any stamping, always do a test print first before you go putting it into your planner. So yeah, this is um, just a little um, overview of different inks. Try them on a note page somewhere in your planner, whatever you've got at home. But stamping up and stamping in your planner can be, you know, it can be really fun. It can add different dimensions that, you know, there are the planner sets around like this one from um, lawn fawn with all the dates and the days and all that sort of stuff there's heaps of planner stamps around so you know give it a try give it a whirl have a play and um, yeah have some fun all right I'm going to go clean all this up and yeah might even do some stamping in my planner anyway I shall catch you later thanks for coming um, if you like this video, give it a like down below. And also, if you're new here, please subscribe so you can see uh, which what my next video is going to be. Anyway, I shall catch you later. Bye. So I just wanted to quickly go through also where you can get these from. I, these are all from, you can get from Spotlight, um, Right Craft. I've seen most of these at. These ones are Kaiser Crafts, are only at Kaiser Craft. And then these ones you'll need to go to uh, Stamping Up for this one. These ones you can find on most craft websites. So um, I'll put all the links below to where I find these ones. And so you can pick up some for yourself.